I'm okay here for now. Land is sacred and holy. Community is sacred and holy. Land and community are inextricably linked. We all know what it is like to go home that such an idea is tied to place and people. We also know that home can mean much more than one thing to us, with different feelings attached to each place that we call home. This land has been home to indigenous people for thousands of years. It is also home to many others, but for less time than that, we live here on land that has been home to indigenous people for thousands of years and home to others for only a small fraction of those thousands of years. A treaty was signed between the ancient dwellers on this land and the more recently arrived people. That treaty defines both rights and responsibilities for all those who live here. We give thanks for the peaceful sharing of this land, the, the traditional land of the Mississauga Ojibwe territory of the Chippewa indigenous people. We promise to abide by the responsibilities laid out in the treaty, which guides the relationship between all dwellers on this land. We acknowledge that we are treaty people as we live, work, play, and worship on this land. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is December 18th, 2022. You too. The fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas pageant Sunday. Welcome to St. John's United Church and welcome to also visit us and watch it with us together. I believe we have fellowship after service. No, no. Thank you. For you. So, <laughs> Please join fellowship right after this service in Shilton Hall. I have a couple of, uh, we have a couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, thank you. Merry Christmas this morning and welcome to St. John's on this where we celebrate probably the oldest tradition in the Christian uh, church and that's the Christmas pageant. Just put up your hand if, if ever as a child or any time you were involved in a Christmas pageant in your life. Yeah. You see, that's, that's how we're all connected and, and we're so happy for Andy Owens and his cast for bringing in and carrying on the tradition. Um, I just wanna invite you on New Year's Eve from uh, 7 till 9.30, uh, Bonnie and I are gonna host uh, a New Year's Eve card, family game, just get together time. Everybody's welcome to come. If you can sign up and let us know ahead of time you're coming, so we can make sure we have the snacks. But even if you don't sign up and you, and you feel that you wanna get together with somebody, uh, don't not come because you're not signed up. God bless, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the library committee invites any of you that would like to consider donating a book on behalf of somebody uh, for 2022. Um, we have put information in the messenger so you can refer to that. But you can either donate money and uh, we will buy a book on your behalf, or you can donate a book. We just ask if you choose to do that, that you check with us first so that we don't have duplication of titles in the library. So you can see anyone on the library committee, that's Mary Rintoul, Sharon Ann McKenzie, or myself. And there will be a few of these slips uh, on the bookshelf in Shelton Hall. If you want to take one of those and then just return it either to the library or to the office, or one of us. Thank you. I'd just like to share one Christmas card with you to the congregation of St. John's United Church. We miss you all so very, very much. Have a safe and healthy and happy new year. I hope to see you all in the spring when roads are the day. Love always, 
from Patty Timerson, you know who she is, and Keith Shaw. So their new place, the new address and phone number is available if you contact church office. Now I'm going to invite Linda. Oh, okay. Linda and Kelly to come forward to lead us to the Advent Candle. and on something that the rest of us aren't.
Las Posadas in Spanish means literally the hostels or guest rooms. During Advent, many communities in Latin America and in the American Southwest have two figures, symbolic of Joseph and Mary, lead a procession through the streets, looking for shelter. As Joseph and Mary go from house to house, they sing a song of entreaty, asking to be let in, only to hear a song of rejection from inside. Eventually, however, they are recognized by those at an inn and are allowed to enter, and great rejoicing and feasting follows. Thus, the plight of the refugees in Bethlehem is highlighted, and those who follow the procession, who are themselves poor or homeless or hungry, are provided comfort and strength as they realize that the Holy Family itself has walked this way before them. Today's pageant is a contemporary retelling of Las Posadas. Jesus told a parable about the day when the human one, a manner in which Jesus often referred to himself, would come in glory, and all the nations would be gathered there. The human one would separate the people in the same way that a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, with sheep on the right and goats on the left. Here now from Matthew 25, 42 to 43, what the human one will say to the goats, I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was homeless, and you gave me no bed. I was shivering, and you gave me no clothes. Sick and in prison, you never visited. And all went to their own towns to be registered. The roads were busy as people who might now be living in far corners of the empire were forced to return to the towns and cities from which their parents and ancestors came, all so that they might be counted at this town of origin. Because they had relatives in this town, People, including Mary and Joseph, would have sought out family with whom they could stay. But of course, the place was crowded. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. How much further do you think it can be, Joseph? I don't think it's going to be much further. How are you doing? I don't know whether we'll be able to make it in time. This sense of thing would have to happen now. The baby may want to be born at any moment, and here we are off to a strange place, so far from the people we know. What if no one comes to help us when the time comes? 
Well, try not to worry, Mary. Surely we'll find some caring people once we get to Bethlehem. I have family there. One of them is bound to help us. Bethlehem, we've arrived. Do you think we'll find a place to stay? I'm so tired. I need to find a place to lie down. There's bound to be some place. Here's a place right now. I know we'll be able to rest soon. Oh no, Joseph. Look. My wife and I have just arrived from out of town. She's about to have a baby. Can you find room for us? We only need a place to stay. Please do not be angry. And perhaps a little food. We are very hungry. We have got no room to spare. You better keep on moving. Surely you must understand. We've got to keep our standards. Joseph, what shall we do? There's another place up ahead. I'm sure they'll have room for us. Look, they must, they must have room for all those others. We have got no choice, you see. The emperor made us travel. We have only come here now, so we can be counted. Sorry for your tale of woe, but it doesn't change things. You can see we've got no room. Please just let us be now. Joseph, what shall we do? I'm so tired and weary, and I think the baby's on its way. Please, we really need your help. Can't you see she's pregnant? The baby is arriving soon. Won't you have a heart? Well, on second thought, I guess, you could use our stable. Just try not to bother us while we sit at table. knocking on the door last night. Just a couple of transients, you know, street people. Why do they keep bothering us? Yeah, I hate it when I see them on the streets. Why don't they get a job? Yeah, stop begging from us. I gave it the office already.
How many homeless people are there? Despite efforts by governments and by the poor themselves, the number of people living in poverty and squalor grows steadily larger, now totaling over one billion, over a quarter of the Earth's population. Adequate shelter is one of the most basic of human needs. And yet, around the world, an estimated 100 million of the billion people living in poverty have no place to live at all. They sleep on the streets, in cars, under bridges, in hallways, and in abandoned buildings. No one really knows how many homeless people there are. What we know now comes primarily from surveys of urban shelters, food banks, and soup kitchens, and the number of the numbers using these facilities is growing. The gap between the rich and the poor is growing once again. And when do we ever see you sick or, or imprisoned and come to you? And the ruler will say, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the solemn truth. When ever you did one more thing to some overlooked or in your mouth's meat, you did it to me. of gifts and giving. With love in our hearts, let us worship God with our offerings as we anticipate in wonder the birth of the Christ child. So the offering is now being received.
gift, allow for new growth to bring forms in the work of the church. Help us to also grow in faithfulness and in love for our neighbors. We live to make Jesus promise a peace thrill, and when the wolf shall live in harmony with the Lamb. Amen. You may be seated.
three. Okay. On behalf of the congregation, I'd like to give sincere thanks to Andy Owen and, and those who took part in this wonderful Christmas pageant. Let's give them a <laughs> time. It has been a tradition here at St. John's to set aside the fourth Sunday of Advent as Christmas Pageant Sunday. So I don't think you expect an eloquent and inspiring message from the minister today. <coughs> For the families of young and old are involved in the program today. People in the ancient world and even a hundred years ago, had a poor education. The illiteracy rate was high. In Jesus' days, for example, 97% of the population were illiterate. 97%. Today, thanks to good education here in Canada, I believe more than 97% of people can read and write, right? And Carol Cullen demonstrated this morning. So how could the good news of Christ, the Christmas story, we reached out to the public with poor education in that kind of environment. One of the ways was to create, to make up an oral story, or compose of carols and hymns to deliver and to pass on to the next generations. That's the one of the reasons we have, this is the Bible, and hymn books. So many books, so many you know, carols and hymns in our hymn books. Christmas pageant was one of them. Just ponder for a moment what you remember or what you were engaged in during the Christmas pageant in your childhood memory. I recognize many of you raised hands during announcement by Ken. I remember I was part of the role of a camel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I remember. So I'd like to show you how to make a camel. So I need four volunteers to come forward, <laughs> if you don't mind, and David is one of them. I need three more. Okay, or oh, three of you? Uh, you are strong enough to hold. Okay, let's, let's, you're the strongest man. Okay, so you sit like this, and your hands backwards, like this. No, no, not this one. Yeah, David can do it. Okay, two hands. And, okay, now, okay, <laughs> you may sit there. Okay, uh, Lucy, come here. Come this way. Sit like this. One hand on the shoulder, the other one. Just cross fingers like this with your brother. Yeah, just this shoulder. 
Yeah, a little bit backward. And then Mackenzie. The other way, your hands, one hand over here, and the other one like this. Yeah, cross your fingers. There's uh, some little bit of space we have. I don't think this one is strong enough. Okay, Colin, come forward. And take off your shoes, please. Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't. Okay, just two of your clothes together. I don't know if this lady is strong enough or not for today. Come over here, and you can uh, sit on here if you. And then you okay. Come over here. Yeah. Okay. And you you put one foot here, the other foot over there. Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, all the parts of camels, please stand up all together. Okay. Are you okay? Yes, I was one of these. <laughs> but I, I, I was so proud of, you know, myself to be, to be part of this and to take, you know, one of wise men to the town of Bethlehem where Christ was born. So uh, let us close our... No, 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 leave it it's still there. <laughs> Don't break it. Are you tired? I mean, do, do, do again, please. Okay, take it easy. Okay, sit down again. Do again. Okay, do again. Okay. So, and then stand up again. So our children may not remember the entire story of Christmas pageant, but I believe they do remember what they took part in on the first Sunday of Advent. So this tradition must go on and on. So let, me be, let us close our gathering by singing. We three kings of Orient are, while these folks if you don't mind, just walk along the aisle and coming back. Just stay there. Okay, ready? So we sing this song, Remaining City. And please welcome Camel, please. Praise the Lord.
commissioning. It is Advent. Prepare for the coming of Jesus. We will be aware of the needs within the circle of our community. We will share in the Advent life of our faith community. God's blessing will be yours in this journey as Christmas comes near. Amen. Amen. I just remind you that Christmas Eve service is scheduled here at St. John's on Saturday, December 24th at 9 o'clock in the evening. Thank you. <laughs>